Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day, and welcome to Mini Block Monday. Today, we are learning how to piece this beautiful four leaf clover block. For this block, you will need four two and a quarter inch squares in a light green color, four one and a quarter inch squares in a dark green color, and 12 one and a quarter inch squares in white. The first step is to take all of the smaller squares and mark a diagonal line from corner to corner. You may need to use two different fabric marking pencils because these are dark fabric color and I, for those I use a ceramic marking pencil and for the lights I use a fine line water soluble blue pen. So go on ahead and mark all of your squares, get them ready to go for piecing. The next step is to arrange two squares, the darker green square and one of the white squares over the light green square and arrange it like this so that the diagonal is running across one side. It's not running like this where it would be going from the corner. So this is the way you wanna set it up, just like so. You're gonna take this to your machine and you're gonna stitch on the marked line exactly. And here's what that looks like once you get it stitched. Now open out your triangles, get them nice and flat, and go on ahead and press the uh, triangles open on the back. You can see it's actually wider than seam allowance here, so it can be a little confusing when you see all of these different triangle shapes. So make sure you've got these two pieces, this in the front, you're gonna take this and trim it down to a quarter inch wide, just like so and do the same thing over here. You can see I've got that nicely pressed open and flat. Over here, I've got the triangle nicely pressed over and flat. And then these pieces on the bottom can be trimmed down to a quarter inch. Now here's what it looks like once you trim those seam allowances short and press the unit flat. Okay, now we're gonna repeat that set of steps, this time with just our white smaller squares line up your squares in both corners, just like so. And again, take this to your machine and stitch exactly on the marked diagonal line. So here's what this looks like after you stitch those two squares in place. Now, if you find it a little confusing to fold this over and then trim the triangles on the back, you know, you might have accidentally cut the wrong thing. You can always just take this to your cutting mat, line up your ruler, with that line of stitching, it's kind of hard to see because this is on white, but if I line up the quarter inch mark on my ruler with that line of stitching, I can just trim that down to a quarter inch seam allowance on both sides. And that might be a little bit less confusing. It might be just a little bit easier for you. Okay, and then now you just simply open that out and finger press that seam allowance open. And you're gonna need your cutting mat anyway because the next step is to trim up your petal to the correct size. So I'm gonna give this a quick press with a hot dry iron just to flatten it out nicely and then we'll trim it up together. Now to trim this up, we're gonna cut it down to two inches square and we wanna line up the straight lines on our ruler running through that center square and then we wanna make sure that the two inch mark is lined up here with just the same amount of fabric pretty much extending on all sides. So that looks really good and accurate. And you'll notice that this is ever so slightly, you know, different from usual because we're not leaving uh, a seam allowance. We are actually cutting right to the tip of that inner square. And that's the way it's meant to be. We want this to look more like a petal shape and less like a square in a square. Okay, so I'm lining up again, two inch mark here making sure that things are nice and straight through that block. That's looking good. Press firmly and always cut with your dominant hand pushing away from you. I know it's very tempting, especially when you've got it all lined up to cut across the top. Don't do that. You can cut yourself really badly. It hurts. <laughs> you won't be cutting for quite some time because you won't be able to put pressure on your fingers. Ask me how I know. I cut myself really badly doing that once and I have been very careful to never do that again. Okay, Oop, looks like I did not trim that all the way through. And whenever that happens to you, just grab your ruler again, get it back in position, 
and just give that another trim. I'm setting down as I cut, which is not how I normally cut. It's hard to put the same amount of pressure on your block when you're setting versus standing. Keep that in mind. You're always going to be able to cut more accurately if you were standing up instead of setting down. You just put more pressure on it. There we go. One last cut. And that is how you trim up all of your clover leaf petals. So take your time piecing and trimming up all of your petals. You're going to arrange your block in sets of two petals, two rows of two petals, piece them together and carefully match that center seam. And here's what it looks like whenever you finish your four leaf clover block. This is going to measure three and a half inches at this stage. When you piece it to other things, it will measure three inches square. Now this month I made something super cute with my mini blocks, an Easter basket. I absolutely love this. And as you can see, I have filled mine with over a pound of Reese cups, so it can definitely hold its weight in candy. Now, if you'd like to find this pattern and make an Easter basket or several, because I know that these are super addictive and once you make one, you're gonna wanna make a million of them, come and find the pattern at leahday.com slash basket and includes step-by-step -step instructions for how to frame your mini blocks, how to do 3D YP seams, how to quilt with some foam. It's really a detailed pattern to guide you through making this project step-by-step. -step. So come and check that out at leahday.com slash basket. And while you're online, please give my video a like, a thumbs up, post a comment in the comment section below, and share my videos. That helps me out the most because it lets everyone know that you enjoyed this tutorial, you learned something from it, and that helps me continue making more videos too. So I hope that you enjoyed learning how to piece this quilt block with me, and I look forward to seeing you again on the next Mini Block Monday. Until next time, let's go quilt.